Round one, fight. Uh, according to a UN rapporteur, according to the US State Department, according to Amnesty International, according to Human Rights Watch, according to plenty of journalists and many others are believed to have detained maybe a million people or more, mainly from the Uyghur Muslim ethnic minority in re-education camps. A million people, Charles, okay. a million. Okay, it's certainly not grabbing headlines in China. Isn't that because you don't have a free press in China, so you can't have <laughs> headlines about the Uyghurs? No, it's because there are 55 national minorities in China, and Uyghur's population is, in it's total... 9 and 10 million, I believe, in Xinjiang. Yes, 0.7% zero point, zero point okay, of the population. But the world population. doesn't work on percentages. If you lock up a million the people world in doesn't, camps, the, the world, world pays attention. 1.4 billion people need to be fed, need to be clothed, What's that got to, need to be educated. a million people in Xinjiang. That must concern you to hear that a million people of your fellow Chinese countrymen and women have been locked if up. If it's by true, your sure. How do we establish if it's true or not? Why don't you let people in to check and count? Then we'll know for sure. I think people have visited. No, they've been on kind of supervised trips with Chinese monitors to select camps where they haven't been able to see everything. In fact, Reuters went on a trip last year. They were taken around. They were allowed to meet some people, and the people sang, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. And Chinese government monitors stood in the room the whole time, and no one was allowed to speak to anyone okay, independently. Well, you know, Charles, that there, are, there are people who've been in those camps who have come out of those camps and now refugees in the US, in Kazakhstan, and they have testified to hooding, shackling, torture, sleep deprivation, if, sexual humiliation, starvation. If, if, this is what's coming out from people who've been in those camps in Xinjiang. If it's true, then they're certainly very bad. This is not my area of expertise, and I'm not involved in the politics, and I've never been to Xinjiang. I'm more concerned about the economic side. Round two, fight. There's another gentleman, he was a very promising uh, footballer. Uh, because he traveled abroad, he was deemed a potential terrorist. He's in a camp, he's not a terrorist. And the last but not least, and it's very, really important, the peace activist Ilham Toti, very widely respected individual, he has always advocated that the predominantly Han Chinese should get along with the Uyghurs and uh, vice versa. He was locked up for life for this kind of moderate advocacy on behalf of his own people. So I would say these three individuals need to be released immediately. The one million Uyghurs and Kazakhs need to be released immediately. There is no justification to bring so much harm to them and their families. They should be able to live in peace and free from fear. Victor, what's your response to that? And Charles, you wanted to come in. Do you know how many Uyghur fighters are fighting in Syria? definitely not a million, Syria? Victor. 5,000 people. So why and not each, lock up those 5,000 people? Each Uyghur fighter fighting in Syria has about three or four persons in their family fighting together. How does 5,000 fighters go over to Syria. Come on, Charles. Every country has had problems with fighters going out to Syria. Okay. France has endured far Five. more terrorist attacks than China wait, has. Wait, wait, and wait, 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 wait. And French not locked up a million Muslims in France. 5,000. And how did they get there? There's a support group. They, Same they, they, in France, Charles. And the French have not locked up a million people. They have a problem. The French claim they have a problem of radicalization. They brought in a state of emergency, but they haven't detained a million people. But even the French haven't said, you can't name your son Muhammad. You can't have children entering mosques. Government employees can't fast during Ramadan. You can't grow, quote, abnormally long beards. That's, that's what Beijing has banned Uyghur people from doing. That's false. How about children not being allowed to go into mosques? That's totally false. Why is it false? How do you know it's false? Because I've seen the photos of the, of the signs. There are photos of the I signs. have a neighbor, next, immediate next door neighbor, uh, who is Muslim and who goes to the mosque with his children. In Beijing? Yeah. He's not in Xinjiang. I don't, you, on the one hand, you say, don't ask me, I don't know anything about this. But then you jump in to say everything's fake. Final round, fight. Stephen, let me ask you this. You're listening to Charles and Victor saying this is propaganda. What do we know? What does the evidence suggest to you that you've seen that can be corroborated about what's happening on the ground on a place like Xinjiang? What we do note of the political system is that the Communist Party of China has a monopoly of the truth and a monopoly of history in China. Therefore, what they say must be true is by definition and what anybody else has to say that does not coincide with what the party says are false news. That is what we are dealing with. When we are talking about one-tenth of an identifiable minority in the home country, 
being identified and put in camps. How would our friends here feel if one-tenth of the native population of Shanghai or Beijing are living in camps? Charles, do you want to answer that? I've never thought about that question. OK, but he's just posed it. I just don't see it. I don't see it happening. I don't see it possible physically. I just don't see it. I don't see it happening.